All right, what's going on guys? Hope you're having a great day. So this video is going to be a guide showing you a couple of advanced tips and tricks that you can apply to your game in Halo Infinite. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been experimenting with a lot of things and the community at large has discovered a number of very interesting and weird mechanics that exist in Halo Infinite that aren't super obvious right off the bat. But today I wanted to go with the ones that were not only implementable into your gameplay, but also extremely practical. There's a few tips in Halo Infinite that we could go over, but there are really hard to implement in game and I just feel like a lot of them aren't worth talking about so this one is going to be the ones that you should definitely be working on or practicing applying in game so I hope you guys either find something out of this enjoyable or you learn something from this video if you do all I ask in return is a like rating that would be great and if you are new to the channel consider subscribing for more Halo content and we are on the way to half a million subs so thank you guys very much for the support recently I cannot thank you enough with all that said let's jump into this shall we so tip number 10 is consistently hitting the G slide or other otherwise known as the long slide. Now, in order to pull this off, this requires you to sprint off any ledge, and honestly, any height really works, but a lot of the, like, crouch jump height items seem to work the best, like as such, what I'm going around now, but this might take you a little bit to get the inputs correctly. You essentially need to sprint off of the ledge, and then tap your crouch button as soon as you hit the ground. It has to be, like, pretty much frame perfect as well. It might take you, again, a while to get the exact timing down, and don't feel bad if you don't hit it every single time but doing this correctly and implementing it into your game you can move around the map at unbelievable speeds catch enemies off flanks or also it's just a really good option to move also in gunfights if you're able or to escape them the practical use for this technique is literally limitless and it can be applied in any map you just have to get creative with the objects and structures around the map pretty much any ledge will work but once again you may not get the inputs correct every single time but it's worth going around in a map and just practicing it a little bit and building the muscle memory in a few tips i have for this is if you run off the ledge and you're noticing you're getting a slide but it's not nearly a quick one or like a super slide then you're inputting it too late however if you hit the ground off the ledge and no actions happen at all you're actually hitting it too early so finding it somewhere in the middle once again it has to be nearly frame perfect for the long slide to initiate but just go in and build it into your muscle memory and it's a very good technique but anyways moving on from that and coming in today at our number nine spot this is going to be making sure that you're correctly utilizing step jump now honestly i'm not even sure if this option is on by default but if it's not make sure you do enable it now the thing it does or affects is your ability to contextually jump so if you take it off you're going to notice that I can get to the top of this thing but it requires an entire full hop however if you turn on step jump contextually it will sort of change the height of your jump so that you land directly on the platform it allows for much greater control and I noticed for this to work you need to be holding in before you jump if you want to do this little short hop otherwise if you jump and then hold into where you want to go it's just going to do a full hop and you'll probably overshoot the place you were trying to land on anyways. So not only to make sure that option's on, but figure out how it works in game and get very comfortable with its own mechanics as well. Now coming in at number eight is a very quick way to move the flag if you're playing CTF and this is just the normal flag juggling. Now technically speaking, there are faster ways to move the flag, but a lot of them I find to be very impractical when it comes to real games. The most practical way to efficiently move the flag in my opinion is just by straight up flag juggling however if you get used to other techniques specifically utilizing the grapple shot but like as you guys know that's not always at your disposal so this is something that you can do without any external equipment or gear that you need to find on the battlefield and it's an extremely efficient way to move the flag it also allows you to break out into a gunfight very quickly if you need to as you're constantly swapping between your weapon and the flag you're pretty much never caught slipping when you need to engage somebody very quickly so coming today at the number seven spot is a pretty interesting one and this is changing Changing the offset view of your weapons now this can be done for every weapon type by selecting it in the UI menu and you can adjust the horizontal vertical and also depth offset and this just changes where the position of your gun is on your screen now it's important to keep in mind this does not change your aim or your actual center reticle at all this simply changes the position of the model of the weapon on your own screen so really what it does for bigger weapons in particular like the spanker or even the rat is it moves it ever so slightly so you can actually see more of your screen and again it makes a bigger difference on some weapons than others like the bulkier the weapon is the more benefit you're going to see on pistols maybe not so much but even on things like the standard rifle and even the BR you can just see a lot more of your screen and there is no number one right answer here just play around with it figure out your personal preference and how much of the screen you do like to see coming at the number six spot is getting used to crouch jumping so in Halo Infinite it's got a little bit less 
less practical use than maybe some other games, but it does still have its advantages. There's a few certain skill jumps that you can hit on a couple of maps, but of course that is very map dependent, but just generally you can get maybe a little bit more height than you would from a regular jump. And this is somewhat more anecdotal, but I've noticed that when implementing the crouch jump into your like regular jumping technique and making that your default, it seems that you can land with more precision where you actually want to go. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the timing on the crouch jump as well, very similar to the G slide, but I recommend that once you, you know, spend at least an hour or two sort of figuring out the timing for it, you can get around the map and get to some places that you didn't believe that you could before. I will say crouch jumping in gunfights isn't very practical, nor does it give you any kind of substantial advantage. So it's more of a positioning tool than anything rather than a, you know, catalyst for winning gunfights, but worth getting the hang of regardless. Tip number five is something we actually talked about in a previous video, but for those of you who have never seen it, this is the dropping your weapon instead of swapping. Now, this is very situational. However, it's extremely applicable in game. Basically, swapping weapons to whatever you have is slightly longer than just dropping the weapon itself. Now, this is very good, especially with like power weapons that you're going to be getting rid of anyways, or even when everybody is just with an AR start also with pistols. And then when you and your opponent are evenly matched and are dealing roughly the same damage to each other, the player that drops their weapon to get the next shots off their secondary gun is going to win the gunfight just because it is faster. So definitely worth something getting the hang of, and it's a lot of fun too. But tip number five, this one's kind of more general, but just having a really good in-game awareness about what the enemies are using, or specifically the gunfight you're about to engage in, what they have. And this is so important just because it's going to help your decision making as long as you're paying attention. The best way to make this implementable in-game is number one, pay attention to the kill feed so you can see what people are using. But also if you're not doing that, just also pay attention to sound. Just by having that awareness, you can know what your opponent's using and where, you know, particular ranges or circumstances they might be weak at, what their strengths are, and you can sort of counterplay based on the information you're gathering. I promise you, just like consciously remembering to pay attention to this stuff will make you play a lot better immediately, and you won't even realize it until you've done it. While it is a bit more general, it's still unbelievably important to get good at. But moving on, coming in at number three, you can actually slide cancel in Halo Infinite. So as you guys know, you have the complete slide animation when you just sprint into crouch, and that will play out, but the problem is, sometimes it causes you to overshoot and position badly, where you can actually cancel the animation whenever you want to when you're sliding. Now, the way to do this specifically on controller is to slide and then shift both of your sticks directly to the left at like a 45 degree angle. This allows you to get the advantages of sliding, so to either get around a corner and shift your hitbox a little bit, but also you can cancel it literally whenever you want to, so you can have your gun up ready for a gunfight immediately. It's a little bit less practical than, say, slide canceling and Call of Duty, but it still has its functions in Halo Infinite, and I recommend just getting used to the actual movement mechanics of this. Doing this on mouse and keyboard is definitely going to be a bit different, so I only know how to do it on controller, but essentially the motion is like that. But coming in on our number two spot is kind of a two for one, so this is having to do with grenade jumps or otherwise extended jumps. Now, this has always been a thing in Halo. You can jump and use the blast from a grenade to push you up a little bit higher, but the problem is in Infinite, this is very impractical. Not only will it, you know, obviously almost kill you, but using a plasma grenade will give you more height, but it's also significantly more risky. However, sometimes it is situational, but the way more implementable one, in my opinion, is using this with a repulsor. You can simply aim at the ground, jump, activate the equipment, and get a ridiculous jump height. You can use this in gunfights to throw people off, or just reach areas that the enemy doesn't expect you to be. Just figured I would include both techniques, regardless of its implementability. I don't know if that's a word, but it's just good to have that knowledge, I suppose. But finally, coming in at the number one spot is avoiding taking as much damage in gunfights as possible, and the way to pull this off is by spamming crouch when you have really no other options. And it might look hella toxic, and to a degree it is, but it is so important in order to avoid damage when you and your enemy are basically evenly matched in any individual gunfight. Now, interestingly, you can change your slide behavior to hold instead of tap if you want a little bit more of a consistent experience with this crouching, where essentially whenever you're holding holding your button, you're crouched, and when, when you let it go, you're back to regular standing, but it is important to implement regardless, even though it is kind of a try-hard, like, sweaty technique, but something I do recommend getting good at, or at least learning. The way to counterplay people doing this is actually to do it right back, oddly enough. It's slightly harder to be consistently accurate when you're going from standing to crouch very consistently and, you know, very quickly, so if you do it right back to them, you guys might end up missing a lot of shots, but if you're the more accurate,
accurate one, you'll have no problem winning. Or you just sort of hide after you engage the gunfight and kind of let them burn themselves out and then you go and pick up the kill. Those are the two most consistent ways to counterplay it, but if you can implement this into your game when necessary, it's a very advantageous thing to have in your arsenal. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much going to be it for the video today. Those are 10 advanced tips and tricks you can apply in Halo Infinite, and I hope you guys enjoyed this or at least learned something from the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like rating and consider subscribing to the channel for more Halo content, and I also stream over on Twitch. If you don't follow me, link to that is down below in the description. But plenty more Halo content coming your way very soon, and I want to thank you guys very much for your time. So anyways, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you all in the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, and peace out.